Okay, so another very common uh, technique here for evaluating limits. So part B, we've got the limit as x approaches 0 of x over the square root of x squared plus 9 minus 3. And um, again, we could just try to plug in x equals 0. But if we did that, we would get 0 in the numerator. We would get, well, you know, 0 plus the square root of 9, or just the square root of 9, minus 3. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, so we would have 0 over 3 minus 3, or just 0 over 0. So, all right, that doesn't really uh, tell us anything that's going on. So a common trick is to, uh, when, you, when you have a square root and you have two terms, so to me the square root, all of that's one term, uh, the, the, then the 3 is kind of the other term, they're being subtracted. Um, what we do is, a common trick to make these work is you multiply by what's called the conjugate. So we've got square root of x plus 9 minus 3. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. And all the conjugate does, it just takes the sign in between the terms and it switches them. So it doesn't change the positive under the radical. Everything there is going to stay the same. So we still have the square root of x plus 9. But instead of multiplying, instead of using negative 3, we're going to use positive 3. And what's going to happen by doing this is we're going to get rid of the radicals in the denominator. You'll still have them in the numerator, but it turns out that that's okay. Everything's going to still work out in this case. So, all right, well, we've got the limit as x goes to 0. Some people are tempted to, you know, distribute out the x and things. Um, you really don't have to in the numerator, so I'm just going to leave it alone. I tell people, unless you're positive, there's a reason to do that. Um, you know, don't do it. I am going to multiply things out in the denominator. That's the whole reason of, of multiplying by the conjugate in the first place. So the square root of x plus 9 times the square root of x plus 9, that's just going to give us the quantity x plus 9. Again, when you multiply things in radicals, um, in general, I, I would say use parentheses. Here it wouldn't really matter if you use them or not. You would get the correct answer. But in general, put the stuff in parentheses because you may at some point have to distribute positives and negatives. Square root of x plus 9 times 3, well, that would give us, well, 3 times the square root of x, uh, excuse me, 3 times the square root of x plus 9. And then we've got negative 3 times the square root of x plus 9, so we'll get, well, negative 3 times the square root of x plus 9. Then we've got negative 3 and positive 3, which is going to give us negative 9. Well, notice that we've got a positive 3. A square root of x plus 9 and a negative 3 square root of x plus 9, those just cancel out. And notice also we're left with x plus 9 minus 9, so really the positive 9 and the negative 9 would also cancel. Well, if you think about it now, the only thing really left in the denominator would just be the x. Okay, so maybe we can write at least one extra step out here. And this is the point for not multiplying out the numerator, because if I multiplied it out, maybe I wouldn't see so uh, quickly that things cancel. So if we still have this x sitting in the denominator. Well, if we uh, just cancel out our x's, we've now uh, got the square root of x plus 9 plus 3. That's all we have left. And now we can simply plug in our x equals 0. That'll give us the square root of 0 plus 9 plus 3. Well, the square root of 9 is just 3 plus 3. And we'll get our solution, in this case, as uh, the value positive 6.